So nice to meet you in person because I've seen the videos. There are literally hundreds of these out there now, millions of views, mm -hmm. and that's sort of your thing now. Yeah, I, I, I would. I feel more comfortable being described as a designer because my making skills are pretty beginner level. But what I try to do is actually try to design not just what the thing's going to look like, but try to design easier way to make things. And then with my limited skills, I can sort of show people that it's not that hard. Right. And you come from that background, former yeah. architect? Backgrounds in architecture with yeah. a focus on sustainable design. But one of the things that always sort of uh, bothered me a little bit is with that business model, that of sort of a custom service profession, uh, you're sort of incentivized to work with wealthier and wealthier clients. Right. You now I came from a, a pretty uh, uh, poor background, so I really wanted to figure out how to take my ideas and make them available to people for free. So that's the idea of putting them out there with the video, something that is easily repeated by people. Yeah, and it's probably one of the better ways to use the internet. All right, so let's talk about this now famous bet that you and a friend made. And, and the idea was, if I got this right, that everything is made very inexpensively over there, mm -hmm. and then we bring it over here. Why can't we make it here in this country at an affordable price, right? Right. Well, the assumption is that it's expensive for to manufacture things in America, and that's because labor costs are generally higher than they are in a lot of other places in the world. So we actually saw that as an opportunity to actually substitute labor with your own two hands so that you're replacing one of the expensive parts. Mm. And then the only thing we had to do was figure out how to motivate and incentivize people to use their own hands to build something, and we did that by sharing design ideas that were pretty easy to repeat. So you and a buddy made a bet, and, and he basically said there's no way that you can get all of these things, thousands or tens of thousands of things made here uh, in a cost-affordable way. Yeah, anytime somebody thinks that something's impossible, it's normally because they have a couple assumptions along the way. And I knew he was assuming that the only way to spread a product or a design idea is through mass production. Right. But I knew that you could, it's easy to disseminate information on the internet, so I just knew I was going to just do a quick demo and let it go viral and let people take it from there. All right, well, let's see where people took it. Are you going to show us this little magic trick of yours? Yeah, so I like to use a lot of kind of unusual materials. I'll borrow a lot from sort of more industrial materials and techniques and stuff like that and sort of mix them together. And concrete is one of my favorite materials to work with. One, because it's available everywhere in the world. Yep. A lot of other countries, they don't have as many sort of forests and stuff as we do, so concrete becomes this uh, readily available, affordable material. Also, concrete's really cheap. Yeah. There's not a lot of things where you can get an 80-pound bag of it for around five bucks. Okay. So we're just going to mix some concrete in the bottom of the bucket, cut this dowel into three pieces, stick them right in, wait 24 hours, and pop it right out. Let's do it. We're going to start by cutting this dowel into three 16-inch long pieces. Just going to scoop in some concrete. This is a 5,000 PSI mix, so it's a little bit stronger than a typical concrete. And we're just going to add some water. The only way to really screw this up is by adding too much water. And that sort of weakens the concrete. I'm just going to mix this to about the consistency of oatmeal. And the key is to make sure that there's no dry concrete at the bottom. And then mixing it with your dial that you just cut. Yeah, I actually uh, try to show things that don't require a lot of precision. And we just put in all three sticks. And I just sort of eyeball it to make sure they're all level. The bottom of the bucket forms the concrete, and the rest sort of forms the diameter of your legs. Yeah. And here's what it looks like after 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We're just going to flex the bucket to create a little separation between the concrete and the bucket. And now we're ready to pull it out. <laughs> Ta-da! Look at this thing. You got a real seat, you got three legs, no wobble at all. No, it's pretty easy, huh? And so after you made this and posted it, did anyone make it? Uh, we've seen about 10,000 of them made around the world. There's actually a couple in uh, Australia. They make them. They make really cool different sort of uh, marbleized concrete, and they actually make and sell them. Yep. I've seen people in Alaska make them with, uh, for ice fishing, but it's just, uh, it's just frozen water. Nice. Um, and yeah, I think we've seen them now made on about six different continents. That's incredible. So you won the bet. I won. All right. Well, Ben, thank you very much. My we pleasure. are going to be watching to see what's next. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.